Hey everybody, here we go. Let's uh, figure this out together. We're going to find the solution to this system by graphing. So let's talk about a solution. What does that mean? Well, an equation has a solution. All right. Uh, and a system can have a solution too, but let's talk about a uh, solution to one of these equations. Notice the solution would be anything that makes these two sides true. All right. Um, the only thing is there's two variables. So any two variables that you can plug in for x and y uh, that makes this true would be a solution to this equation. With this equation, it's the same story. Uh, there's lots of different x's and y's that will make this true. I can plug in, in this case, any x I want and uh, do a little arithmetic and it'll tell me the y value that would solve this equation. Now the thing about this system of equations is there's one magic solution that uh, the x and the y both uh, work in this equation and this equation, right? The exact same x and the exact same y. Or I should say, if there is a solution, that's what it is. That x and y goes here and here, and it works for both. And most of your systems are going to have one magic pair of x and y that work in both, OK? Um, well, a graph, if you remember, is made of an infinite number of points. Every point comes from. Uh, either this function, okay, that'll make its own graph, and this function with all of its points that it will make will make another graph. Okay, so let's uh, let's start with this one because I think that's uh, a little bit easier. It's set up nicely. If you remember, it's in slope-intercept form, so it's got a, a uh, y-intercept of negative three, a slope of four thirds. So it goes up four to the right three, and here is our graph. Remember what that graph represents. For instance, zero negative three, zero negative three. If you plug in 0 for x and negative 3 for y, this equation will be true. It will be negative 3 equals negative 3. This will go away. Negative 3 equals 3. Uh, if I go up 4 and over 1 following that slope, this point is at 3, 1. If I plug 3 in here, then I will get 1 for y. Try it yourself. 3 is cancel. You get 4 minus 3 is 1. And it's true. And you know what? This point works too. And this point works. And this point works. All of these points work. Here, let's find another one that's easy. 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, 2, 3. This one right here is at uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so 6, 5. Try it yourself. Plug in 6 here and 5 here. It will be true. On this side, you'll get 5. On this side, you'll have 5. OK, so all of these points on this line, they all work in this equation. Do they all work in this equation? Probably not. In fact, there might be one that also works in this equation. Well, to see what all the solutions to this equation look like, let's put this in slope-intercept form, too. Let's we'll subtract 2x from both sides. So we have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 y-intercept and a slope of negative 2. That's down 2 to the right 1, in case you had trouble with that at all. Just put that over 1. Down 2 to the right 1, and we're going to go down, down, down like this, following that slope. And, uh, you know, that graph looks all right. That's kind of the things about, thing about graphs. We talked about it before. It, they don't, they're not the best looking thing. They just uh, they don't quite uh, capture all the points accurately. But they give us a good idea, and they show us that well, this point, and this point, and this point, and this point, and this point all work in this equation. And maybe I'll uh, just change the color real quick, like red for this equation. This point, this point, this point, this point, all these points along this line that are part of this line work in this equation. And what do you know about this point right here works in this guy here, right? Works in this equation, and it's part of this line, so it works in this equation. So this point must be... Uh, the x and y that works in both of these equations. And all I was looking for is that you just try to, to get close to what that intersection point is. Um, so let's see, down 2 over 1, uh, down 2 over 1. That's, uh, it's hard to tell. It looks like maybe 2 and a half and uh, 1 half, 2.5 and 0.5. Uh, hard to tell, but if you got anywhere near there because it, that's what it looks like on your graph, that's all I cared about. That's, that's the only thing I cared about. So uh, if, if that's what you had, if you had the graphs that look pretty much like that and you were shooting for the intersection, 
that is all I could hope for. Because as we talked about, graphs, they're not great. They are not accurate. They're sloppy. They're never perfect. Um, so we don't have laser beams and, and perfect aim and, and straight edges and, and infinitely skinny uh, pencil lead. And it's just not going to work out perfectly. So uh, I'm not going to mark you off for um, getting really close. Here, though, we can be exact. We can be exact here. And the, the thing about substitution, I only asked you to do substitution once. Um, the, the y and the x that we're trying to find are the same for both. Okay, So this y and this y, they're the same. right? Maybe this is 7. This would also be 7. Maybe this is 2. Maybe this is also 2. Well, this y is equal to 5x plus 17. Okay, so I should be able to substitute that in for that y, because these y's are the same, and then figure out what x is. Okay, So 3x plus 5 times, where I would put y, I'll just put 5x plus 17, uh, equals 1, and solve for x. So 3x plus 25x plus uh, 5 times 17, Eighty-five, so uh, that's eighty-five equals one. Twenty-eight x plus eighty-five equals one. Subtract eighty-five from both sides. Twenty-eight x equals negative eighty-four. Divide by twenty-eight. X equals uh, that's three. That's negative three. Let's double check. Eighty-four divided by 28. Of course, I know it should come out negative because it's negative divided by positive. It is 3. Okay. So x is negative 3. Now I know x is negative 3. I'll plug it negative 3 in here. So y equals 5 times negative 3. That could look better. Plus 17. That's negative uh, 15. Plus 17. That's 2. y is 2. The solution, negative 3, 2 or x equals negative 3, y equals 2, or any other way of saying that x is 3 and y is negative 2. Or sorry, x is negative 3 and y is positive 2. Okay, I'm going to solve this system using, and I shouldn't have, it was a typo, shouldn't have put the word using there. So we're going to solve this system. How will we solve it? Let's solve it using elimination, because it's a, it's a fan favorite. Look at this. Um, maybe you're not familiar with elimination. It's been a while since you've seen elimination. Let's just do this, okay? Let me just show you what I'm going to do, and you'll see why I do it. So we get 4x minus 4y equals 18, and we'll just bring this other equation over. 3x plus 4y equals 10. Um, okay, so now what's going to happen is I'm going to add these two equations together, okay? Really quickly, like on this side I'm going to add 18 plus 10. What I want to do really quickly is explain why this is even allowed. On this side, I'm going to add 18 and 10, right? To 18, I'm going to add 10. So you would think, well, if I add 10 to this side, I have to add 10 to this side. But according to this equation, 10 is the same as 3x plus 4y. So on this side, instead of adding 10, right, trying to do the same, do the same thing to both sides, I could add 3x plus 4y. And let's see what happens when we do that. 4x plus 3x is 7x. 4y, sorry, negative 4y plus 4y is 0. So 7x equals 28, and x equals 4. So now I know x is 4, and I can plug that in for x and figure out what y is. So 2 times 4, I'm just using that first equation right there. Uh, 2 times 4 minus 2y equals 9. 8 minus 2y equals 9. Negative 2y equals 1, because I subtracted 8 on both sides. So y equals negative 1 half when I divide by negative 2. So 4, negative 1 half. Alright. Uh, I kind of got this cut off, but. Uh, I'm sure we can cope. Lauren downloaded 12 songs and two albums for $37.46. Adam downloaded three songs and four albums for a total cost of $47.83. Write and solve a system of equations to find how much a single album costs. Well, that was really close. There we go. So she downloaded 12 songs and two albums. Okay. Um, so how many song or how, how much does a song cost? Well, it costs x amount per dollar, right? So x will, will be the uh, dollars per song. And the y, we'll call that dollars per album. Uh, ALB for album. So 
if I knew how much it cost per album and how much it cost per song, I'd take the cost per song, I'd, I'd multiply it by 12, and I would take the cost per album, I'd multiply it by two, and you know, if you're the cash register or you're the cashier, uh, you're the computer on the website, then that's how you calculate the 3746, right? So you take 12 times the mystery cost of X, you add that to two times the mystery cost of uh, Y, the cost per album, and you get 3746. All right. I do the exact same thing for this other guy. Okay, because so this is the kind of system of equations where, like, two people do two very similar things, and they wind up with two very similar amounts. Like this person buys songs and albums, and it costs money, and this person buys songs and albums, and it costs money. Other times it's like, well, this many tickets were sold, and this is how much money they made. Right. So you have two different kinds of equations. Here we have two really similar kinds of equations because I would just take 3x plus 4 times the cost per album, and I would add it together and I'd get 4783. Now I have two equations. Like this is like right, right out of the elimination playbook, right? It's two equations ready to be, you know, one of the variables ready to be eliminated. How about if we do this guy? times negative 4 so that this winds up being a negative 12x and it combines with the 12x and they get eliminated so we've got 12x plus 2y equals 3746 just copying this equation down then negative 12x uh, minus 16y equals a negative I don't know 4 times 47 83 4 191.32, negative 191.32, because that was a negative 4. And we add them together, and we get 0x. We get negative 14y, right? 2y minus 16y. And 37.46 minus uh, that, that, that. Uh, let's do that, okay. Let's get right here. What I'm going to do is if I hit subtract, it'll subtract a number from my answer. I know that I'm supposed to subtract 191.32, but I'll subtract 37. 46, which is the same difference, I'll just make it a negative. So I'll make it negative 153.86. And then we'll divide by negative 14. All right, so this should be negative. I'll divide it by 14. Um, and actually, negative divided by negative should be positive. So if I divide this by positive 14, it should, should be exactly it. 1099. Uh, what was I looking for, and what did I find? I found Y, which I am calling the cost per album. This is uh, asking for how much a single album costs. So 10.99. That's how much a single album costs. Okay, solve this system of equations. Uh, we try to get something to cancel out. If I multiply this by three, then I'll get a positive 15x, and these will cancel. So I get 15x plus 12y equals 18. Here I get negative 15x minus 12y, that's kind of funny, equals negative 18. Oh, that's really funny. Because if I add these together, I get 0, 0, 0, 0 on the left side. 18 minus 18, 0 on the right side. Well, what does that mean? It means that these two equations are actually the exact same equation. Like if I multiply this by a negative, I'll get negative 15x minus 15y equals negative 18. That's the exact same thing as this. Which means that any x and y that works in this equation will also work in this equation. There's an infinite number of solutions. Now, if I wound up with the hypothetical of, uh, let's say I had 15x plus 12y equals 16, is like what I came up with there. And then I had negative 15x minus 12y equals negative 18. Well, these are not quite exactly the same. These parts are exactly the same, but these are not. So if I add these together, what I'll get is 0 equals negative 2. Well, they're not exactly the same. Like this, I, I could multiply this top one by negative and get negative 15x minus 12y equals negative 16. This is negative 15x minus 12y equals negative 18. There is no way that I can plug in an x and a y into this equation and get negative 16. Then plug that same x and y into this equation and then all of a sudden get negative 18 because these are exactly the same thing. 
I do the exact same thing with x, the exact same thing with y. I combine them in exactly the same way. And in one instance, I'm supposed to get negative 16, and in the other, I'm supposed to get negative 18. There's no way that can happen. And this false equation is evidence of that. Over here, this true equation is evidence that these two equations were actually the exact same. They cancel each other out perfectly, so they must have been exactly the same. So there are infinite solutions, because they're the exact same equation, so they have all the same solutions. Um, so x pounds of candy. So this is a, a, the kind of system where the two equations are not so similar like these were. It was just somebody buys so much of one thing, so much of another thing gets one total. Somebody buys a different amount, and a different amount gets a different total. Here, that is not what's going on. Okay, so here we have a that was supposed to be a bag for candy. So this is a bag we're going to put candy in. Uh, there's a x pounds of a candy that costs three fifty. Okay, so we'll kind of just code that in blue. So some of the candy is x pounds of candy for 350 a pound. The rest of the candy is y pounds of candy that costs 430 per pound. So the rest of this bag that we're putting together is made of this uh, this y candy. So so this is uh, I guess I should uh, maybe get some black and say there's x pounds right here. This is y pounds. And altogether, this whole bag weighs 10 pounds, because it says so right here. OK, so this mixture, uh, if I were to, to, to just grab it off the shelf, it would you know, have a little uh, sign right here. And the sign would say $4 a pound. Okay, so, well, this is a little over $4. This is a little under $4 a pound. So apparently we put, um, let's see, a little more of this than this, it seems like, so that it would bring the, the total up to $4. Okay, something like that. When we put these together, uh, not the same amounts of each, x pounds of one and y pounds of another, the total comes to $4 a pound. Okay. So, hmm, we gotta make sense of this. So, so you know, this y, this y candy is its sign is four thirty a pound, and this guy's sign right here is uh, three fifty a pound. Fifty five zero. Okay. So you have to ask yourself, and this is the the, the challenging part. You have to sit with the problem. You have to examine it. You have to think about it. And the, the thing that I'll, I'll tell you right off that is uh, consistent about all these systems of equations, you're going to have to write two different equations. And each equation is going to have those two variables, x and y, or whatever you call the variables. In this case, they tell you x and y. So um, what is one equation that I can write involving x and y and something else? Well. I know this blue shaded area represents x pounds of this, and this, this uh, purple area represents y pounds of this other thing. And when I put it all in and I weigh it all out, it weighs 10 pounds. So the x pounds plus the y pounds is equal to 10 pounds. OK. OK. Now also, I could look at this as like a bag of this kind of candy, just right next to a bag of this kind of candy. And this bag is going to cost some, and this bag is going to cost some, and it's going to cost the same as if I bought this whole big 10-pound bag. right? So uh, this is a lot like the albums and song problem. I buy x pounds at 350 a pound. Uh, I also buy y pounds at 430 a pound, and it should come out to be the same price as this 10 pound bag at four dollars a pound. Here's this, the, just a little bit of a tricky part. I know that if I take 350, I'll just do the zero off 350x plus 4 
30y. That should give me the total cost of these, like if I think of it as two separate bags of candy, it should give me that total cost. Uh, well, that, that, how much will that be? I do know that it, it totals to 10 pounds, and I do know that the mixture costs $4 per pound. So if I buy 10 pounds of a mixture that costs $4 per pound, it should cost me how much? It should cost me $40, okay? So now we have two equations. We have a, a system of equations that we can solve for one or both of the variables. And I like to have these lined up, I like the equal signs lined up. Um, if I want to eliminate one of these variables, how about if I multiply this guy by negative 3.5? I know it's kind of awkward, but we'll just multiply by negative 3.5, and it'll be the opposite of that. I'll write that new guy down here, negative 3.5x. That's pretty easy. Uh, negative 3.5 times y, so negative 3.5y. All right, sorry, I paused that and kind of lost where I was, but I think we were here. Negative 3.5 times 10 is negative, we'll just move the decimal place over 1, negative 35. So this cancels out. That's great. Uh, on the other side, 45 minus 35 is 5. And here, 4.3 minus 3.5 is, uh, is 0 0.8. Uh, so 0 0.8y equals 5. So I divide by 0.8. And that one I'm not going to do in my head. 5 divided by 0 0.8, 625. So y is 6.25. Um, so I bought 6.5 pounds of the y kind of candy. And how much did I buy of the other? Well, they have to add up to 10. So I must have bought 3.75 of the other. That one was a little bit tricky, but uh, it's it's actually one we, we have done before uh, as a as a class, and uh, and I, I know that I know that you you can do it. Um, so next, so this is where we talk about the properties of exponents and actually explaining them. So two to the third times two to the seventh is two to the ten. Explain why it can be an, as easy as saying, well, two to the third is two times two times two. And 2 to the 7th is 7 twos. And those are all multiplied together. Okay, so this is like I could go like this is 2 to the 3rd. And this is 2 to the 7th. And this, if I just multiply them all together in a big long row, is 2 to the 10th. Right? 3 twos plus 7 twos, that's 10 twos. That's good enough. Like if you drew that diagram, I would be ecstatic. Um, next. If uh, 5 to the 3rd is raised to the 2nd power, why is that 5 to the 6th? Uh, well, I have two things, right? Like, I'm going to multiply something by itself. Both of those things are 5 to the 3rd, which is 5 times 5 times 5. So if I just uh, multiply all the way across, that's 5 to the 6th. Right? Two groups of 3 fives. that's 2 times 3, that's 6. And I can see that anytime I raise a power to a power, I can rewrite it this way, and that's why the property where we multiply exponents becomes clear. All right, uh, 7 to the 8th over 7 to the 3rd. Why is that 7 to the 5th? Why can I just take 8 minus 3 and get 5? If I multiply it all out, or if I write it out long way, I have 8 7s over 3 7s. And these three cancel these three, and we're left with five, right? The, the original eight minus the three that got canceled leaves five sevens. So that's why it's seven to the fifth, right? Some of you didn't even write anything down there that, like, that's what you had. That was great. You need a little room, I understand. Uh, that's a good explanation. Okay. Um, some of you said things like, uh, because three to the fifth is 243. The question is not that. I, I'm, I'm trying to, instead of writing this, I wrote an in-between step. Why is it that these are the same? Okay, As with all of these, why can this be written as this? Why can this be written as this? Okay. Well, I have something to the fifth power. So it is something times something times something times something times 
everything. All these things are the same. They are all 3y. Multiplying something to the fifth, that means I'm multiplying it by itself five times. The thing that I'm multiplying by itself is 3y. Well, this is just this times that, this times that, times that, times that, times that. It's just all multiplied together. So that's 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 3 to the fifth. Okay, that's how I get 3 to the fifth. And then y times y times y times y times y times y. That's y to the fifth. All right? And that's why this is the same as that. I just have five groups of these. And these, all these things are just multiplied three times y. I'll group the threes, I'll group the y's, and I have three to the fifth times y to the fifth. Okay? Uh, that was it. Was it it? Was that all? Yeah, that was all. So here we go, next page. All right. So again, why is this the same as this? It's as simple as this. We have something times something times something. They're all the same. They're all the fraction three over four. Because 3 fourths in parentheses to the third means multiply 3 fourths times itself three times. Now, the way we multiply exponents is straight across. So I would multiply 3 times 3 times 3, that'd be 3 to the third. And 4 times 4 times 4, that'd be 4 to the third. And that's why this is the same as this. And of course, 3 to the third is 27, and 4 to the third is 64. Um, that's not the important part. The important part is from here to there. Why are those the same? Now we want to explain negative exponents. What's going on with negative exponents? Um, if I write this out long way, like some of you just did this, which was great. You just wrote it out long way because you didn't know where else to start, maybe. This is a great place to start. Okay. So x to the third is 3x's. x to the fifth is 5x's. These x's get canceled out. And look what happens. We wind up with x squared in the denominator. Um, not quite done, because I haven't showed that this needs to be the same as that. But the same, well, I guess it's back here. This property right here, where I should be able to take, excuse me, where I should be able to take 8 minus 3 and get 5, that property I want to work here as well. So I should be able to take 3 minus 5, x to the 3 minus 5, 3 minus 5 is negative 2. So this fraction is clearly equal to 1 over x squared. If the property of subtraction works, it would be the same as x to the negative 2. So these are equal to each other. <coughs> so because I can take this and rewrite it two different ways, those two things must be equal to each other. And there's an explanation of what x to the negative 2 means. It means 1 over x squared. Okay, we're going to use this fraction to explain what in the world a 0 exponent would mean. Well, if I write it all out, um, in fact, you know what? I don't even have to write it all out. It's y to the fifth over y to the fifth. That's something divided by itself. That's clearly 1. But if I use that subtraction uh, property again, I should get y to the 5 minus 5. And that's y to the 0 power. So I can rewrite it this way. I can rewrite it this way. So these must be equivalent to each other. Uh, so y to the 0 must be 1. So it's 3 fourths to the 0. I could use the same reasoning here for any number. 3 fourths, negative 2, 4.39, pi, e, square root of 2, anything to the 0 is 1. The only exception is that, like, say we, we take something to the 0, that y cannot be 0. 0 to the 0 is just one of those things that breaks math, and it is not a thing. It has no definition. OK, here, r to the fourth times r to the fifth times r to the sixth. You can just add those exponents together and get r to the fifteenth. r to the fifteenth. If you didn't know what to do, some people wrote r, 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 right, for the four r's, and then five r's, and then six more r's, and then said, how many r's is that? That's, uh, well, I think I did one too many there. That's four plus five plus six, 15. And it just. That would just demonstrate the property that we talked about earlier. How yeah, about this guy? We're just multiplying everything together. So it's really like w to the third times c times negative 7 times w to the seventh times c to the fourth. I could group these guys together. And that's w to the third. That's three w's. There's seven more w's. So I get 10 w's, w to the tenth. 
Here I have four c's and one more c, so I have c to the fifth. And times negative 7. Right? Um, how about this guy here? Well, we could rewrite this as negative 2 to the fifth times t to the sixth to the fifth times r to the third to the fifth. And that's just a use of the property that we proved back here. Um, maybe, maybe, yeah, there it is. Right? If I have a product inside of parentheses and I raise that to an exponent, then each of the factors gets, a, uh, gets an exponent, gets that exponent right there. Because clearly there'll be five threes and five y's in this case, and in this case. In this case, there will be five negative twos, there will be five two to the sixths, there will be five r to the thirds, okay? What is negative two to the fifth? It's negative two times itself five times. That would work out to negative 32. Do it yourself, negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, 5 times, that's negative 32. t to the 6th to the 5th, we talked about this properly earlier. You raise a power to a power, you multiply the powers, that's to the 30th. Raise a power to the power, you multiply the powers. And there we go. I'm going to simplify this product here. Well, let's see, we can kind of do what we did in this previous problem. We get 2 to the 3rd, q to the 3rd r to the 5th to the 3rd, which would be r to the 15th. Uh, so that's done. Then we do q to the s qr to the 6th. Well, if we were to write that out, qr times qr times qr times qr times qr, we would get q to the 6th, r to the 6th. Okay. 2 to the 3rd is 8. Uh, q to the 3rd times q to the 6th, so that's 3 q's plus uh, 6 more q's, that's q to the 9th. Uh, r, that's r to the 15th, that's r to the 6th, so r to the 21. All right, so we're going to rewrite this expression using positive exponents. Okay, After you do this for a while, you'll know that this is x squared, y squared over 9. Like this negative exponent is going to cause this x to come up to the numerator, this y to come up to the numerator, and their powers to be positive. But let's explore this a little more and explain why this is. Um, let's see. Well, 9 is just 9. Uh, x to the negative 2, it is, in fact, we did exactly x to the negative 2 in another problem and showed that it must be the same as 1 over x squared. So y to the negative 1 must be 1 over y. Yeah, let's, let's call this 9 over 1, and we'll just multiply all this stuff together. We've got 9 over x squared y squared. Uh, now, with positive exponents, we have a fraction inside of a fraction. So how do we divide 1 by this fraction? We multiply 1 and multiply 1 by the reciprocal. Oh, I don't know why this got a square on it. Excuse my mistake. So x squared y over 9, that's the reciprocal. We're multiplying by the reciprocal, we get 1 times x squared, or sorry, x squared y over 9. And again, I made a mistake at the beginning. So it comes out x squared y over 9, because we worked it out so that we, we dealt with these negative exponents. That's just 1 over x squared, 1 over y to the first. Just multiplied all these together. Now we have this fraction within a fraction. Multiply by the reciprocal, get x squared y over 9. But of course, if we do um, 2x to the negative 3y to the fourth over 3z to the negative 2, uh, a to the fifth. I could just take this guy, bring him down here, take this guy, bring him up here. So it would be 2z to the second, y to the fourth, over 3x to the third, a to the fifth. Right? I could do it that way too. But not understanding why this works it can be kind of a problem. Rewriting it and doing this way every time, of course, that's also going to be an issue. We need to understand why this is before we really start using it. And that was it. That's the answer section right there. Let me make sure I got all those on this page. I did. All right, that's it. Thank you for watching. I uh, hope that was helpful to you. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. Thanks for watching.